You know, I went on LegalZoom, I set up my LLC, and some of you out there, many of you out there, probably are like, I'm done, box checked, have my LLC. Thoughts? I mean, number one, if you do want asset protection, you gotta work for it. So if you're gonna set up an LLC, maintain it, get, make sure it's set up properly, you have to go, well, how is it owned? How is it gonna interplay or work with my real estate, my operations, my online business, my Uber driving? Welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Main Street Business Podcast. My name is Mark Kohler and I'm not here with the usual illustrious Matt Sorensen. I'm here with the pleasant, intelligent, smart, witty, and beautiful Katie Nitwick. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, is this your first time on the show? Um, I've answered questions in the background, but this is my first time yeah. on camera. So how do I look? It, you're, yeah, you're, Tristan, you're, you're gonna, putting me to shame. Yeah. You're going to edit this, right? We finally had makeup involved in our show. Before that, it was just, you know, two sweaty guys from a locker room running onto a camera. So thanks for leveling up the show. Glad Very to have well. you here. Thank so Katie you. is an attorney in our uh, Phoenix office. She's also a licensed financial advisor. And hail from Ohio? Is that where you... I do, yeah. I'm a Buckeye. Mm. Yeah. Wait, that's not a good thing? Uh, a I don't fan? know. Don't yeah, break my no, heart. I, I just... Ohio State fans, they're a different breed. They're, I'm just saying. Ohio folks in general are a different breed. <laughs> okay, well, and you can say it. You're from ways. there. That cuts both ways. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So welcome, and she, she uh, with that financial advisory experience, she's been a huge addition to the firm. Many of you around the country have probably had a consultation with her where she can look at the legal, the tax, and the financial aspect of this. Uh, she works in liaison with another financial advisory firm to ours that we really rely on for some great long-term planning. But that's not the topic today, so uh, someday. But we got to do help that. If you have any questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay, today's topic is what is your LLC good for? It, could it be useless? Could it be everything you dreamed it would be in helping protect you or save you taxes? My own son this week, it killed me. I told you this. Yes. Yeah. He calls, texts me and goes, did you say I don't pay tax at the LLC level? I go, no, it's a pass-through entity. And then he texts me back. Well, doesn't the LLC save me taxes? I'm like, bless your heart. Now he was they do not, by the way. <laughs> he was listening to our live YouTube yesterday, and it's just fun. My kids, Dylan, is so he's got his own business. He's so successful. But over the years, I thought when he was editing videos for me or coming to my workshops, he was really getting into the topics. No, he was just shooting vid. You know, <laughs> the creative types are they're they're a different breed as well. Yeah. Well, and the reality is, is until you own your own business, you really don't care about this. That's right. That's right. So. And he's venturing into that now, so we're excited for him, and yeah. it'll, be, it'll be good. It's cool. So yeah. for any of you out there that have thought, I need an LLC, or you've set up an LLC, you're like, what do I get with this? Is it really worth it? And I think asset protection is probably at the top of everybody's list first, that someone cannot sue me personally for anything that could go wrong in my business. That'd be number one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you want to add to that? Or what would you say, two and three? Or what are your thoughts? Like, why do people do LLCs? Uh, asset protection, obviously, number one. But number two, um, to kind of consolidate things, I worked with a client yesterday that um, he's a big real estate investor, and he said he's a, an engineer as well, so he's extremely tactical. And he said, I like to have my commercial properties in one LLC and my residential in another. Mm. And I said, okay, whatever floats your boat. So some people, yeah. and there's a bunch of different reasons. Also, if you if you have partners, yeah, Another yeah, good one. I like it, and I think that's this is a chance for you to get an EIN, electronic identification number, get your LLC bank account, start building separation, branding. Mm -hmm. Maybe you trademark your company name or your product. You're starting to build credit, but I think it all starts with this that number one of asset protection, especially for those real estate investors out there. Oh, absolutely. So, um. Well, Katie, does that one sheet of paper cut it? You know, I went on LegalZoom, I set up my LLC, and some of you out there, many of you out there, probably are like, I'm done, box checked, have my LLC. Thoughts? Yeah, it's not going to cut it. Okay. Not going to cut it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's my final answer. All right. So pieces and parts, thoughts? So, I mean, number one, if you do want asset protection, you got to work for it or at least pay someone to do it for you. That's kind of what we specialize in. So you gotta have an operating agreement that says how this thing works, number one. Um, you're obviously, if you 
got the LLC approved by the state, you're going to have the articles of organization. That's basics. That's usually the one sheet of paper. You got to have minutes too. We, you guys talked about this on one of the more more recent podcasts. Although you're not statutorily required to have minutes, you should have them. Yep. It's part of the whole thing. You should have your bank account. I cannot tell you how many uh, clients I work with that have an LLC. They've had it for years and they just commingle everything with their personal bank account. And they say, oh yeah, I took draws. And I'm, where'd you take draws from? Oh, you know, I just put everything to my personal account. It's fine. Mm. So I say, okay, so you never opened a business bank account and you and you don't have people paying you under a W-9 to that bank account. They say, no. Mm. Yeah. That's a problem. Um, and that corporate book, um, that pretty little book that holds it all together, you pay your fees to your state every year. These are the pieces and parts that if you don't have your LLC is not going to protect you. Now, by the way, I want to say this for all of you out there that have corporations, it's the same story. It's the same rule. You're going to have articles of incorporation, bylaws, board of directors minutes, shareholder minutes, and um, all brought together with stock certificates in that book. Um, it was fun yesterday. I'm, I'm picking on Dylan, who I I'm, and he listens to the show, so I want to tell him how proud of him I am, and I love him, and he's got his business rolling and all that. But one of his questions was that I like too, and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't talk about this enough, and. I think it's, it, again, I want all of you to start feeling the angles here, questions that you may not even know to ask. He said, well, if I make my wife part owner of my LLC, don't I get better write-offs because I can write off expenses for her helping with the business? And I said, no, you don't need to answer, you know, add her to the business, but you can still get those write-offs. And that's where the board comes in. Um, how do you advise clients on this with the spouse, the board, getting the write-offs? The LLC structure is really important at this level. It this, is. Yeah. Right, yeah. And I don't... Um from, from an ownership standpoint, it, it you know obviously, if you guys have a revocable living trust, we recommend that, that owns it. So ultimately, it's going to go to your spouse anyway. Uh, but even if you don't have it set up like that, it's not really all about deductions. Sometimes people just want their spouse to work in the business to contribute to a solo 401k. Um, you know, we devise the family management company structure so that maybe if they are helping in the business, but not to the point where they need to get a W-2 wage, um, we have them work for the family management company. Yeah, but now but you're opening up a whole can of worms oh, whole with that term. Worms, Let's not go there. Yeah. So what I, I think is important for anybody out there that's married, the way you write off your spouse's expenses helping in the business is through the board, the board of directors, the board of advisors. So I immediately told Dylan, don't worry about ownership. We want your spouse working in the business as an advisor, as a decision maker. Um, and that board of advisors is something that we put in every one of our LLCs. Some of you are like, I've never even heard of this. Well, that's when you need to do a cleanup. And we're gonna talk about that. We have a little cleanup special every year. It's that time of the month, it's that time of the year. So we're gonna go <laughs> over it and talk about this, this uh, cleanup uh, situation. But this is when you can create a board of advisors, much like a board of directors for a corporation. Very simple, there's no liability. They don't have ownership. It keeps the tax return simple. But now I unlock the write-offs. That's right, that's so. right, yeah. There's so many ways to, to slice this. And I think it is really beneficial to talk with an attorney. Um, even just getting a half an hour with us, an hour, um, to kind of take a step back and really look at your at your overall your strategy. Strategery? Strategery? Your 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 st st strategery. Yeah, I I'd yeah. love to. Uh, am I, I? We were trying to debate this, right? We were. Am I quoting George Bush or Will Ferrell? I, I think can't. we're all we were all confused at this point, but I do. <laughs> I did fact check it, and it is Will Will Ferrell. Oh, okay, so yeah, SNL Will creation. Ferrell was mocking our. President Bush back in the day. But the best part is he didn't even know whether he had said it or not. George Bush was like, yeah, I probably said that. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. So strategy, uh, <laughs> to play off that word for a minute, is sometimes you not only need to clean up and fix your entity that might need to be reorganized a little. We're not saying throw the baby out with the bathwater, but sometimes it's good to step back and go, oh, I've got two or three entities or I've got two or three businesses. What's my coordinated strategy? And so... <laughs> And by the way, this is not an infomercial. I'm saying find a lawyer, a tax lawyer that knows what they're doing with the numbers as well. But in our office, you're around 1500 bucks at most to really get a comprehensive strategy, set up a new entity, 
or clean up an old one. We have like a variety of packages so that you're getting what you need tailored to you. Um, and that's where the strategy comes in. You, right. Sometimes you need to clean that up, yeah, not just absolutely. the entity. And I'll say the best vehicle for strategy is the trifecta. Mm. Honestly, Love the trifecta. I cannot do a consult without drawing a picture for someone. I was, you know, I was upset about this. Do you know across the street at the restaurant, they have a trifecta? What? It's on their menu. It's, it's Should a, I prepare the attorneys it's to sue? It's their million dollar bacon. Oh, um, and right eggs there. and hash browns, and they call it the trifecta. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I, I don't know bacon. what's better, LLC, corporation, trust, or bacon, <sighs> eggs, and hash browns. It, both, both of them amazing trifectas. Truly. Life-changing. So anyway, when you meet with one of our attorneys, we're going to diagram a color, literally a color PDF bubble chart that brings together your strategy, and it's called a trifecta. So this plays into your LLC, because if you're going to set up an LLC, maintain it, get, make sure it's set up properly. You have to go, well, how is it owned? How is it going to interplay or work with my real estate, my operations, my online business, my Uber driving, my spouse, my kids. And so those are all the questions that you want to vet in that hour or so with an attorney. And it really is powerful. If we don't save you 10 times what you're paying for our time, then we've, we failed. So we want to get excited. I'm constantly telling my attorneys, get excited, damn it. Oh, this I love fun. it. Yeah, no, this is this is what I live for. This is part of my purpose, 100%. <laughs> Isn't it fun? I like it. you yeah. just said that. Isn't it fun in life? You kind of find your calling, your purpose, and uh, yours and mine is to, are to be nerds and talk <laughs> about legal and tax issues. But when you find that purpose, you're like, you do. You get jazzed about it. It gets exciting. Sorry. That's Absolutely. a digression. Yeah. I love when that when I see the light bulb go off yep. for some people. Okay, so we're going to bring this together with a story. I asked Katie if I could tell this story. She said, well, I'll ad lib. I'll mock you during Give your story. You yeah, you can you can interject. Um, this was my first day in court. Literally, my, well, other than traffic court, age 16 for, <laughs> we won't go there. And I guess there was that vandalism charge. Anyway, this is <laughs> my first day in court when I actually played lawyer on TV. I was so excited. So, and this plays into your LLC, everybody. So some of you are like, what in the hell are you talking about with this LLC? And I'm grateful that many of you are hopefully just get, catching the vision here of maintaining your entities, getting a good overall strategy for your LLC or your corporation. But here's where the rubber meets the road, if I may. So back in college, I had a cleaning business. I, had, I was a janitor. I was very proud of that. I was a small business owner. I've got clients that- make I've seen your office, Mark, and I don't know how you were successful. <laughs> you clearly oh, had a lot of people working for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was more of a delegation thing. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, good comment. Okay. Uh, no more comments. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. So, I, was, I had a just janitorial business, and we've got clients- that are making over 200 grand a year as janitors. Oh, absolutely. The construction cleanup, home cleaning, commercial cleaning, carpet cleaning. Um, don't diss on this. I mean, I, I, I loved it. It got me through college. I sold the business to go off to law school. It was a great experience. Boy, I've got some stories. Anyway, this is one of them. So here's one of my stories. Okay. So this guy stiffed me. Uh, Tristan, have you heard the story? This, have you have not. So our producer, this is new for you. So I'm, I'm just, I'm saying this to you. You're going to love this. So anyway. <laughs> Uh, this guy stiffed me for about eh, three or four grand. What we had done is we'd gone into his hair cosmetology school. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a hair salon. It was the cosmetology school. So it was larger and we had to strip and wax all the floors. Man, I had a wet drag system, wet dry vac system that was incredible. I'd get the floor so clean oh, and then we'd the lay wax feeling. and buff them out. Oh, you could. It's, it's like, them. like lines in your lawn. Oh yeah. I mean, this is what janitors are proud of. When you go to a grocery store at three in the morning, you see what I'm talking about. Those janitors, they're buffing those grocery store floors. So I, I um, did all this work for this guy, and he didn't pay me close to three, four grand. So I was pre-law. I was excited. I was going to University of Utah. Go Utes. BYU sucks. And uh, is this where you go, go Buckeyes, Michigan sucks? No. 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 You, oh, you like Michigan too? No, oh. I just like it. There's a rivalry there. I mean, yeah, but like, tell okay, your story. All right, I mean, all right, yeah. all right. Okay, so you know, whenever you can get a good, you know, sporting <laughs> rivalry dig, you get, you take it. So I was going to college pre-law. I'm going to sue this guy. So sued him personally. 
Uh, this was my, for many of you, Judge Judy, Judge Wapner, all the different court, you know, TV judges. This is what you dream of, of going before the judge, having your day in court. And I started going to my professors. I've got this court date next month. I'm suing this guy. You know, he just stiffed me three grand. How do I win? And, and I was so nervous. I'd never been to court where you actually aren't... Um, in handcuffs. No, I'm just joking. So I was in court. I was excited. I was ready to go. And uh, I had prepared my strategy. And so, I'm okay, I'm going to give you play by play. Okay. The story's a lot more exciting. First of all, he point. shows up to court with a wedgie and floods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I was not soon. wearing the property. Yeah. So this guy, I, so now I'm going to go into the storytelling portion here. So I show up the day of, and uh, he literally, I'm not kidding, had two lawyers, which I thought was kind of cool at the time. Uh, he's all dressed up. I'm I'm just in my college gear because you know I wanted to be the little guy. I was kind of the Matt okay. Damon and Rainmaker. Oh, I like you know that. I wanted I, like I wanted to play that strategy. role. So uh, so I'm I'm the little guy against the corporate jerk. That was my ploy. So I, I was working that angle. Uh, I had read John Grisham. You know I knew what I was doing. So then I um, I show up and I remember vividly. I mean this. I I figure out that I'm on the left side, because when you walk into the court, plaintiff's on the left, defense is on the right, and I walk over to my little table, and I was nervous I was gonna be at the wrong table. He walks in, and his attorney put his, suit, his briefcase on the table so loud, it kind of just echoed through the whole courtroom. We call that a power move. Is that a power move? It's a power move. I've never done that power move. I've never done that either. Well, I don't go to court very often. And you know, I'm in the boardroom. I've never, I've never been to court. Yeah, but that was, it was, I mean, I was just like, it like literally kind of sent a chill through me. And I'm like, two lawyers, this guy, they're giving me sneers. And I'm like, I was nervous, you know? And so um, uh, the judge comes in, we all stand up, yada, yada. And um, I sit down and then boom, this guy's attorneys, they're like, pop, pop right up. I mean, they, and they're like, your honor. Case dismissed. Yeah, this Yahoo over here, this kid, he cannot sue my client personally. Uh, he's got, my client's got an, a, a corporation. I can't remember. I have to say, I don't know if it was, I think it was corporation, not LLC. Uh, but my client's got a corporation. Uh, he, this Mark Kohler has sued him personally. This is your honor. Uh, it's statute number 45321 and blah, 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 blah. And case number Jones versus whatever. The, you can't sue my, and he's just like, blah. And the judge is just like getting verbally just, blah. And then he takes control like Judge Wapner can and says, I got it, sit down. And then he goes, Mr. Kohler, do you have a, do you, have Ooh, a you know, Mr. a comment? I got called Mr. Kohler, I was kind of excited. Normally it was like, hey janitor, come over here and scrub the <laughs> toilet, you know, but so he says, Mr. Kohler. And I, I, and now this was part of my ploy. This was phase one, my, my, my uh, college professors had prepped me. They're like, Mark, you're gonna pierce the veil. You got to get past this LLC or corporation. You got to get past it. So I was like, okay. So I show up. I, I, I go, your honor, this is the first I've heard of a corporation. He paid me with a personal, well, actually, you never paid me, but I don't have a contract with this corporation. Um, I've never heard of his corporation. I, 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 this is all news to me. Uh, I just, this guy hired me. I went, shook his hand, and I did the work he asked. I, I, I don't know of any corporation that this guy's talking about. And the judge was like, hmm, raises his eyebrows. I thought that was, that was That's a good a, That is an incredible lesson to everyone out there to have a contract. Oh yeah, with, <laughs> there you go too. I thought you were gonna say the eyebrow, that was a good move. You know, so, oh yeah, that yeah was I mean, excellent. I'm reading the court. Excellent. You know, in the Murdoch trial, I was watching, oh, you know, I was watching brutal. all the players, you know. Absolutely. It was, it was a that show. That guy is just dead behind the eyes. Yeah, yeah, just, it's a show. It is. Yeah, it is. so. Um, I, I, so I see the judge give me a window, you know, and then he looks over at the at other attorneys and goes, all right, you got a comment? What is it? Why is Kohler saying this? I mean, obviously you have a corporation. Uh, well, yes, uh, your honor, we do. And he goes, can I see your corporate book? And he did. He goes like, do you have your minutes? Do you have your bylaws? Do you have... Uh, are you in good standing with the state? And he goes, well, your honor, under case number, whatever, and all the... And, I don't, and the judge goes, I don't care about that. Have you... Did you... Give Kohler a contract with your corporate name. Do you have a, a, a business card with your corporate name that you gave to Mark Kohler? All he knows, his name is Scott Wood. I'm calling him out right Ooh. now. I mean, this is public record. Yeah, his I'm name is Scott Wood. I was, I'm going to say it. And he goes, do, do, do you have a, um, not that there isn't 32,000 Scott <laughs> right. Woods in the country. I, th I think we're safe. Uh, but, you know, there's no slander when it's true. That's you true. Know, it's That's true. Absolutely right. And so, uh, and he goes, Where, where's your corporation? 
all he knows is Mr. Scott Wood. You know, that's all he knows. And they're like, well, Your Honor, we haven't, you know, followed some of those, that little protocol, you know, blah, 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 blah. But your case number, whatever, and court number, you know, court case this and statute number, whatever. And they just start rambling again. And the judge then says, Mr. Kohler, do you have a rebuttal? And this was the moment I'd been waiting for. I had practiced my line in front of the <laughs> mirror at home. I mean, I you know those moments where you're like kind of, you're oh, yeah. shaking inside. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're, you can just feel your heart going, you know, and, and I was so nervous and I stand up. I'm not kidding. It's true. And I, and I was, I had practiced my line and I looked at him and I said, your honor, if they don't respect the corporate veil, why should we? Oh, that was my line. And you could hear a pen, a pin drop, you know? And the judge said, thought for like four seconds and he said, you know what, Mr. Kohler, I totally agree. Mr. Wood, Kohler wins, judgment in his favor, pay him, and uh, I would admonish you to maintain your corporation or your LLC the way you should. Have a good day. <laughs> Stands up, walks out. I'm like, whoa, I'm standing up, I'm doing pelvic thrusts, I'm like, jump. you know, I'm like pole dancing on the, you know, the bar there. I mean, I'm like doing and it all. And the guy's judgment. Yeah, and I walk no. out, there's there's reporters, <laughs> oh. you know, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah? Yeah, they're interviewing me. I mean, oh, it was okay. just, you know, cameras. Well, no, there was none of that. We, we call this big fish. Mark's, yeah. Mark's a big fish Yeah, that would, maybe I embellished that last part a little bit. <laughs> I was so excited, and I was Aww. like, woo! And he was out in the hall, and I remember it. It was like one of those big, echoey, marble floor halls at the courthouse, and he pulled out his checkbook and wrote it out, and he says, and he was like, Sam, here you go, you little brat, snot, whatever. He called me kind of a name. I can't remember what the name Ooh. was. I was just looking him right the check out. I'm like, yep, there's an extra. Yep, mm -hmm. <laughs> write that whole thing out. And because uh, I got my, you know, of some, I didn't have legal fees. Now, now was it a personal check or no. was it from his business? <laughs> All I know is I cashed it uh, and it went through. Okay. I was excited and I got my money. That's awesome. But people, oh my gosh, I little did I know. Now that's from another Will Ferrell movie. Little did I know. Stranger Than Fiction. Oh, I've never seen that. Oh my gosh, it I is know. one of the best. I'm the biggest movie uh, buff. He's an IRS agent in that one. You would I love know, it. I, okay. I do need to watch that. So, uh, and Dustin Hoffman was writing a, a book called Little Did I Know, or he was mm -hmm. giving lectures mm -hmm. on it. But anyway, but little did I know at the time that that case would be the seminal uh, landmark case in blog articles, videos, podcasts, trainings, on how if you don't maintain your company, it is freaking worthless. And don't, don't you, it started with uh, the IRS and audits. They're gonna ask for the same stuff. Yep, absolutely. So, I don't know, do you have a good story? Nothing. You wanna add to no mine? Good story. Do you wanna like than, embellish it, anything? No, other than uh, my mom had a cleaning business that I worked in with her for oh. years and years. Wow. So. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, I, have, that's good. I have the same experience. We were both former yeah, yeah. janitors. So. Any legal advice Look for how far we've come. This is your window. <laughs> this is your legal advice. Tell people, look them in the eye right now and say, people. No, I say, I say that exact same thing to them. I say, you know, a good plaintiff's attorney, that's the first thing that they're going to try to do. The first thing that they're, especially if they have a deep pockets defendant, is they're going to say, we shouldn't respect these corporate formalities because they haven't been. Mm. So I kind of stole that line and okay. I use it with a lot of clients. I like so. it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I um, want to give you all some takeaways here. Let's be practical here. When you have a small business, it is critical you have an entity. Write these down, damn it. Sure. Number one, you've got to have an entity to begin with. Number two, you need to make sure it's set up properly. Having all the pieces and parts. Now, doesn't mean you have to start over. Any of you have the LLC or corporation, you can call our office and say, hey, all I've got, some of you don't even know where that sheet of paper is. All I have is like, I can go on the state website of Alabama and see that I have an entity, but that's all I got. So the paralegals can pull documents from the state, rebuild your corporate book, get you all the parts you need, and then uh, make sure that you're at least coming out of the gate strong. You've got that. That would be number two. What do you say number three is? What do you like? Come on, you, go, you choose. Have an entity, set it up. Make sure it's, make sure you're maintaining the corporate formalities. You're going there next. Okay, all right. I don't know. I mean, so maintain, no, it's okay, it's okay. I like that. Then you're going to maintain it. Yeah, keep it, keep I thought it current you, I thought with you the were going to go keep with it. what you said before. Open your bank account. Oh, open your bank account. Okay, come on. Yeah. You well, were that's going part of steps. setting up the entity. You uh, should, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go back. I'm going to say number three. Open that bank account. Okay, all right. 
Okay. If I may. And then open the bank account, start using it, say, and, and, and respect it, the separation. Yep. Okay, and then number four, tell her what's maintain it mean. We're getting granular here. We're giving people filing, action items. Yeah, if you have a state filing requirement in your state, you better be filing. You better be paying your annual filing fee every year because the state, in a lot of states, they can just administratively dissolve your entity. So they should note their calendar. Absolutely. No, they shouldn't. Or, what should they do? Or, okay, this was <laughs> They should it. use KKOS's oh Main Street Business Services. Oh my gosh, that's a damn good services. idea. See, gosh, you, we we're have gonna, a, <laughs> We're going to work with you on this podcast thing. <laughs> we have a, I'll get better, I promise. We have a, a company compliance department, 150 bucks, and they'll do it for you so you're not banging your head against the wall, you know, once a year, trying to figure out what the state wants and they reject your stuff. Just have our team do it. We'll keep your credit card on file. Pay us the 150 for our time. It's like a no-brainer. Yep, and that we're going to send you a uh, a quiz, if you will, that you get to go take a tax-deductible board trip. Now you're going to write off your board meeting, some call a juggernaut, and you're going to go to Vegas and take this little quiz with you, this this questionnaire, and you're going to hold your board meeting. And that board meeting, once you fill it out, amongst. Maybe you could, even at the roulette table, you could <laughs> right there. Free drinks, so you're getting Maybe. free drinks, your counting cards. and yeah, you're playing roulette <laughs> and holding your board meeting with those critical board members. Then you send it back to the law firm. This is still all for the 150 bucks. Yep. And then they take it and type it up and make it look super impressive, like the Declaration of Independence, and send it back to you to sign and put in your corporate book. That's right. Bam. And See, we maintain that record for you too. Yeah. So yeah, we got a copy. Yeah, so when you show up in court, like Scott Wood, you're like, pen drop, here it is. Your Honor, I filled this out in Vegas at the MGM at the roulette table. We had our board meeting. We are legit. And oh, KQS just sent me the report. We are in good standing with the state. I paid my fee. And all for 150 freaking bucks. You're like nailing it. Yeah. So that's, that's the maintenance. Yep. Easy schmeasy. Now on the setup, I'm going to go back to the setup. If some of you again have that just that quote unquote one sheet of paper that it's it's garbage, um, sometimes you can't polish a turd. Sorry, I just say that in the ladies' presence. Have you no, ever heard true. of that? You can't polish. A turd. I have. Yeah. I have. Yeah, yeah it's I'm just also an athlete, so oh, okay. yeah, you don't right. have to. Turds and athletes go hand in yeah. hand. Yeah. Well, I've <laughs> I've had I've had coaches tell me that about <laughs> oh, my technique okay, before. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. All right. You can't polish a turd. Coaches. Yeah. Coaches will say all sorts of things to motivate a team. Oh yeah. So sometimes we can't fix it. It's such a mess, but. This is where the cleanup special comes in. We are gonna look at your overall strategy, build your trifecta. This is an option, we have a discount for this. And you can get a new entity, you can get the old one cleaned up, you can spend an hour on the phone with Katie and she's gonna build your trifecta and email it to you and you're gonna have your strategy for the whole year. And the easiest way to take advantage of this special is just go to kkoslawyers.com. Just go to the law firm website, you can make an appointment in the middle of the night with the calendar uh, option. You can call during the day and say, I want Katie, I need my trifecta, I need a cleanup, I need my new entity. We do have other lawyers, but yeah, since you're here, I mean. We all do the same thing, honestly, and that's, you know, iron sharpens iron. I think we're, we're all communicating on a daily basis about client issues that, hey, I've never ran across this as any other attorney ran across this. And we always, we always, come to a consensus and help each other, it's it's a great team. Okay, now I'm gonna say number five. So number one, get an entity. Number two, set it up properly. Number three, open your bank account. Number four, maintain it. Get right on the system. If some of you haven't done a cleanup, we can do that system immediately. Even if you've had your entity for five to 10 years, let's tidy it up. Number five, I'm gonna call respect it. Respect it. I like that. And here's what I mean by that. This kind of goes back to the bank account, but the company, think of Scott Wood. If you're gonna hire someone, they should get a business card with your company name on it. They should know that you're the manager of this LLC or the president of the corporation. There should be a contract. Uh, your website should reflect the name of the company. Mm -hmm. Your email should reflect the name of the company, not market, you know, uh, you know, market Gmail, whatever. It should be, get your, it's not much to get your own company uh, URL, Gmail yeah, platform. It's, it's, it's what, maybe 20 bucks a month. And now I'm Mark at Mark J. Kohler Inc. I, I want to have that respect. So all these little, what are, what are yeah. the things you're thinking? Um, I would say a big one is 
when to have another LLC. Sometimes people. Okay, hold on. We're talking about mean. We're talking about the, the respect part for a minute. Like, okay, we're talking about I your email, see. your website, your business card. If you have a business card, maybe your Venmo, your PayPal, your merchant account. You want yeah, those all are all going to your company. Absolutely. I, and guys, W nines. So many people put their personal social. Mm. on a W-9 instead of their business. Use the EIN. That is huge. If the business is paying you personally, it's not paying the company. Hold on, if, it's, if someone else is paying you it, personally. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. If the business that you're working for is paying you personally, they're not paying the company. Yeah. Now, on this note, I want to say, I w spoke to a group of realtors yesterday, and they said, Mark, in my state, we have, this is, in Hawaii, this is common, in, most, in a lot of states, brokers or the division of real estate telling brokers what to do, will not pay a realtor or 1099 a realtor uh, their LLC or corporation. And so they go, well, I can't use my LLC or corp. No, 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 you can't. We are gonna drive that 1099 through your personal tax return and back into your company. The IRS allows for that. Absolutely. But no one, a lot of accountants miss that. Oh, 100%. And so you can still use the company even if someone 1099s you personally. So when you fill out the W-9 and your broker goes, no, we're not gonna pay your corporation EIN, fine, here's my social, not all is lost. In that situation, it's okay. Right. Sometimes there's a, they call it Department of Professional Licensing or a Doppel issue, where a chiropractor, a doctor, you got Medicare, you got Medicaid, you got insurance billing, you got brokers, you got engineers, you know, issues where they may not pay your company, it's mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. I like that. So but you, if you're operating as a sole prop, just because you were too lazy to set up your business bank account. Wow. Did, not did help. you just call one of our listeners lazy? Hey. She's, you know, bam. Call spade a spade. Sorry, people. Um, I apologize for that. Indiscretion. <laughs> you said turd. <laughs> okay, I did say turd, but well, I, but it wasn't personal. Oh, that's you know, okay. You know, all right. I'm just all saying. Right. Okay. Respect the veil. Use the IN. Use contracts. Um, rental property. Oh, yeah. If you have an LLC, you've got to transfer the title Bingo. into your LLC. What else would you say? I mean, I'm just opening some of these doors. Anything else? Can, title? Um, oh, man. Well, on the title, I'll unpack that, is you're yeah. going to call it uh, warranty deed transfer. Don't worry about the quit claim deed. In most counties, there's 3,500 counties around the country. That's right. You're not going to worry about a quick claim deed. It's the same price to do a warranty deed. In California, it's called a grant deed, and you have to transfer your your rental into the LLC. And I know some of you are like, well, I, I got to do on sale clause. Oh my gosh, the bank's going to freak out and call me. They don't. In 20 years, I've had one client that had the bank freaking out because they transferred the title. Oh, I've written letters to banks. and they, Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, yeah, okay, we get it. Same yeah. ownership. It's, it's not that big of a deal. So that's part of respecting. Make mm -hmm. sure you transfer the title. But elaborate on why, I mean, we probably have a lot of real estate investors watching this. Why a general warranty deed versus a quick claim? Well, you, do you want to say it or do you want sure. me to? Yeah. It, number one, it, you're conveying the full breadth of rights that you have in that property, if you have a general warranty deed, if you just have a quick claim deed, they're saying, ah, we don't, we don't know exactly what happened here uh, prior to the to this quick claim deed. So we're only conveying, you know, the rights that we have right here. So it's a to lesser, yourself, to which you, is weird. To yourself, it's you want to give yourself, you want to give Correct. your entity all the rights and it, duties you, you have. You know, it can it can um, make buyers leery. So when you're going to resell the the, the property and they see mm. that, that that you only have a quick claim deed to transfer, they're going to require a brand new deed search. They want the general warranty deed. Well, they certainly are going to get one with title policy. Oh, yeah. But even transferring it to your own LLC, yeah. you want your LLC, treat your LLC like a third party. Exactly. What would that third party want? Yep. Give that to your LLC? You can. There's no liability. Yeah. But it protects you and gives you better rights under your current title policy. See, when you bought a property, you got a title policy under your name not your LLC's name. So when you transfer the property to your LLC with a warranty deed, you're transferring all the rights and a lot of times that title policy and all the provisions are not gonna be uh, thwarted or uh, violated by using a warranty deed. So make sure you do that. Um, and I'm gonna say the contract thing is again, lease agreements, service contracts, your website, your uh, disclaimer policies, your Everything on your website should be reflecting the company name everywhere possible. 
So that's how you properly properly use your LLC. If you need it cleaned up, give us a call. I like down when you do your strategy session. This is where the other LLCs, other corporations right. could come into play. Um, but folks, we're we're trying to help you here succeed. And you want you paid for this LLC. Let's make sure you get every little, you know, reek out every little drop of water you can have from it. Um, final advice: What would you tell these owners of these LLCs, corporations, or setting them up? Anything we, you know, just some admonition or something maybe we have missed or what you want to elaborate on? You guys are already successful. You're out there boots on the ground doing it. It's okay to need a little bit of advice or, you know, just pick someone's brain that, I mean, we do this with thousands of clients all over the country all the time. So, you know, chances are we've seen someone similar to your situation or might be able to add something to that, you know, you never really thought about. And yeah. It's a big deal. I just enjoy getting to know people and what their story is as well. Um, honestly, guys, it's a privilege. It's an honor to hear some of the things that you guys share with us. Um, I never take it lightly. So thank you guys in advance for contacting us and working with us. I love it. Well, thanks, everybody. And we'll see you next week on your journey through your American dream. We'll see you here at, next week on another episode of the Main Street Business Podcast. I think next week is going to be open forum. So if you have a question, we've got so many questions on the, the page. We've got to really maybe do two back-to-back -back shows and just cover so many questions that you listeners have. We want to really be there for you. So tune in next week. We're going to make sure we cover a couple days worth of uh, Q&A and uh, keep living the dream. Thanks, Katie, for being here. Thank you for having me.